So guys, I'm Shannon with AMRA, and this is a part of those series of videos that we're gonna do that kind of explain what your rights are, what the Forest Service could do, BLM, EPA, all those kind of things. And what we wanna talk about today is a couple of things. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about claim jumping, but we're also gonna talk about this. As you can see, this is a claim called Ratchilla's Ravine. It's an AMRA claim, it's real close to our shop. And uh, as you can see, the Forest Service has come in and logged this, and they've cut all these trees down. You've just seen the big pile of them over here. And anyway, so does the Forest Service have the right to do that? Can they just come in and cut the trees down on your mining claim? And the, the short answer is yes. And the reason why is we had a lot of beetle kill up here, and... What that did is because this is a primary road here, it's an improved road, is any of these trees that actually threatened the roadway or any structures, which there are none down here, they have really kind of the duty to come along and make sure that it doesn't kill somebody with a tree falling down. So um, the Forest Service up here actually works with AMRA uh, pretty closely. They called us and it was kind of funny is that the tree that we had our Ratchillas Ravine sign on uh, was dead. They took our sign down, cut the trees down, and then put the sign back up on a live tree. So uh, we want to thank them for that. But yes, they can come and do this. Now there are extremes, uh, like we have an example on a claim pretty close to here that we own as well, that they went in and they just logged the whole damn thing and they didn't tell us about it. They drove dozers in the creek bed. That is not acceptable. They should notify the claim owners if they're going to do something like this. And to give you another example of that is we have a claim, um, actually a series of claims up Bull Creek called The Office. And right above there is Montgomery Gulch. A lot of tree uh, mortality up there. The district ranger, Jim Janae, contacted us and said, hey, we're gonna be up there cutting these dead trees down to make sure that they don't fall on the campground, on the road, and please let your members know so, so nobody's up there and gets hurt. And so it, we applaud them for that. These trees need to be taken out, guys. Um, they're dead, and so anyway, they'll end up burning these big brush piles. But one thing that they can't do, and that is to interrupt a mining operation, and that's what they did over in Groveland, is they went in with these skidders and dozers and everything like that, and there was a couple, it was a couple of members of AMRA that had actually dug a hole, were getting really good gold, and when they drove through there dragging their trees and everything like that they filled in almost two years of work that these pe people were doing so that's not acceptable so anyway so don't just hate the forest service they actually are doing some things that like this that are actually needed and uh and authorized but i want to talk about claim jumping so guys this is the second release of this video we're kind of uh inserting this uh, little edited portion into the video uh, because when I originally posted it I did get a, a feedback actually from some colleagues of mine uh, people that I uh, respect and value their opinion greatly and um, so we wanted to add a few things to this and one I want to tell you a little bit about the difference between a load mine and a placer mine. Placer is surface um, it's typically like you know you're mining river rock and panning for gold and things like that. A load mine is a tunnel site and it's spelled L-O-D-E not L-O-A-D um, but a load mine is a tunnel that basically you tunnel underground and you know we call it hard rock mining. Um, and both of these things have different requirements as far as what the location um, uh, or what the filing actually is on a load mine you actually have to post four corners and that is by law um, and in, even in some cases you actually have to put up boundary markers so in between those four corners whether it's ribbons or you know you blaze a tree or stakes or whatever it is like that and that's just not the case with a placer claim but um, you know uh, I think that it's important guys to understand that the purpose of these educational series videos are to give you that basic knowledge um, to everyone so you kind of understand oh this is what you have to do with the claim you know one of the most important things and this is what Kirby Jackson uh, one of my buddies actually brought up to me was the discovery 
monument is the single most important thing um, in making a claim valid. So when you go out and you're actually mining a placer claim, um, you have to put up a discovery monument. And so let me give you an example. If I was to walk onto a creek, I dig out a crack, I know that the claim is available, uh, the area is open for mineral entry, um, and I make a discovery of gold right there, I'm going to make a stack of rocks right there on the bank, probably at that time, and that's my discovery monument. Um, in most cases, and in some cases it's even required, to put up a three foot post. You look at the claims uh, like up on the South Fork of the Clearwater in Idaho and uh, they use white PVC pipes that are actually capped and um, and that's the, the norm up there. So we just wanted to provide you with this um, and then also just this comment guys. We don't want to turn these videos into two hours of lecturing. Um, that's not the goal. The goal is to have them be a little bit fast, informative, teach you the basics and then we can get into the nuts and bolts things um, as we do more vid videos like this over time so I hope that clarifies some things. So let's talk about claim jumping. First of all the requirements are if you own a claim is you're supposed to mark at least one of the corners on a placer claim and you're supposed to have a sign a discovery point meaning that we just walked over from that sign there. There's our notification in a very prompt or a visible spot to everybody that, hey, we got a mining claim. We actually have four corners marked here which show this claim. Um, we have a, a three or four foot tall white post with the claim number and stuff on it. But most people um, don't really follow that rule and they're supposed to. So it makes it difficult for the average person to just go out on a creek bed and go, oh, well, can I mine here? Unless there's a sign posted, uh, how are they to know that? Well, you have to do some pretty extensive research on what's called the LR2000 and see if there's valid claims. And we're going to do a, a whole series of videos on that coming up pretty soon. So you really have to kind of rely on the signs. Um, but let's say that you own a mining claim or your club owns a mining claim and you have people that are mining on your claim and you have it marked, well, that's actually a violation of the law. So it's not something you're gonna pick up the phone and you're gonna call BLM or you're gonna call the Forest Service um, or anything like that. It's what's called a civil matter, meaning that if I own the mining claim and I catch this guy over here that he's panning in my, on my creek, that, guys, that's really not that big of a deal, first of all, because you're not going to get, nobody's going to strip all your gold away. Now, if they're running a six-inch dredge on your claim or something of that nature, yeah, that has a tendency to anger somebody. Most of the time, and I'm going to say all but one that I can think of, that we've ever caught somebody mining on our claims illegally, we've actually went up and, and said, hey, why don't we teach you guys where to find the gold, teach your kids, because they were with kids. Um, you know, how to pan and things like that. And then we explain to them what the mining claim ownership process is. There's only been one time I actually had to pull a gun on somebody, but I'm not gonna get into that, although it's a good story. But anyway, so let's say that I catch this guy mining on my claim. So we've got our evil claim jumper here, Don. <laughs> and this is typically how a conversation works on a claim jumper issue is go, hey man, did, did you know that I own this claim? No. How would I know? You didn't see the sign over there that says Federal Mining Claim? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess I did. Okay. You know, it's not a big deal, and I know that you really suck at mining, so I'm going to teach you how to pan and where to look for gold. But in the future, you need to look out for things like that because you're actually violating federal law, and you can get in a lot of trouble. Oh. You know, it's an issue where we would probably call the sheriff and have him come in and can deal with it but just be aware that you got to look for corner markers like white posts signs things of that nature and that'll tell you that somebody actually has a mining claim okay. so, i wasn't aware thank you yeah you're very welcome uh -huh. you are such a nice man <laughs> <laughs> but anyway that's that's typically the way a common conversation works now if we were to take that to another extreme where he becomes really kind of an ass about it and says, well, F you, I don't need to pay any attention to anything, then that's fine. What I'm going to probably do is I'm going to go up and I'm going to take a picture of his license plate. I'm going to inform him, 
You know, sir, I own this. It's a real property mining claim. I pay property taxes on it. I own the minerals in the ground here. And unfortunately for you, I'm just going to go get the sheriff. So we'll find out who you are, and you can just deal with the sheriff. Dude, it's public land. I can go wherever I want. You're right. You can camp here. You can hike. You can fish. You can hunt. You can do whatever you want. I have no problem with that. As a matter of fact, I encourage that. But you do not have any legal right to obtain any of the gold or the minerals out of this ground. I own them. I paid for them. I have a document, a deed, that actually shows that. You don't have to be complete dick. I'm just saying, you don't have that right. Knock yourself out, buddy. And I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> we may edit that. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's kind of the way that that normally works. Now, the process that you would go from there is you're going to take your claim deed and you're going to identify who he is. His name is Don Siegel. You know, he drives that gray Toyota truck. I'm going to take a license plate uh, picture of it. And I'm going to go down and talk to Sheriff Benoise and go, hey, man, I tried to reason with this guy. He just basically told me to go screw myself. Um, you know, can you send a letter to the guy stating that he can't mine on my mining claim? And that's what's called a civil matter. If I come back and catch him a second time mining on my claim, I'm absolutely going to call the sheriff. Actually, I might just get Joe Lima to take care of the problem for us. But anyway, so that's how you deal with claim jumpers. Guys, we probably get a call once a week from somewhere in the West, in the Western 19 states that you can file mining claims on, about claim jumping. What do I do? As a matter of fact, we're working a case on that uh, right now for uh, for Josh Reinke and, and Zach Ketchum, is just try to be as nice as you can, but you do actually own the mineral rights to the ground. We pay property taxes on this. It's real property as recognized um, by the United States courts. So it's not a question of if you have these rights, you do. Anyway, uh, we're gonna keep doing series of videos like this. If you've got an idea or a question or something you want us to do one of these short segments on to explain what your mining rights are, send us an email, AmericanMiningRights.com. Go out there to our AMRA webpage, click on contact us, send us an email, we'll shoot a video for you. So. I'm Shannon, and that's the Criminal Dawn over there. We'll see you guys next time.